Welcome one and all to the Ferret and Raccoon podcast episode 173. I am your one and only host for this podcast, The Angry Raccoon, bringing you the second podcast of August 2021. And boy, am I in a pretty good mood, actually. Uh, The last two weeks has been kind of tough in terms of the kinds of things I've been doing. I've been mainly doing a lot of writing and catching up on things. That's kind of been the main theme of my holiday. I know the uh, school kids are off at the moment, so I'm also off as well, which is great that both of our jobs and situations kind of align up so I can have a bit of a break. But yeah, catching up on things, mainly things that do and don't regard this channel. I have some exciting plans and ideas in response to how popular... I guess this podcast and this channel and some of the older videos, hint, hint, are doing. So I'm working on a few things. But yeah, in terms of other things and what I've been doing over the last two weeks, I haven't really finished anything. There was one thing that I thought I was going to be able to talk about, but turns out it's not actually finished and is going to be finishing later on this year. So yeah, I'm kind of in the middle of a couple of um, series. So hopefully by the next podcast... I should have a ton of things to talk about, and as you've probably already noticed by the length of this episode, this isn't a very long episode because there really wasn't that much I wanted to talk about. There are a couple of few things that were very, eh, I guess is the best way to describe it, so I've kind of narrowed it down to three key things that I really want to kind of recommend to you guys and kind of talk about in some expansive sense. So let's get right into that. And one of the first things I want to talk about, uh, something that happened over the last fortnight, was the fact that Sony finalizes its acquisition of a popular anime dub streaming service, uh, Crunchyroll. And I also want to talk about some of the other implications regarding this situation. So Sony already owns uh, Funimation, which was another company or is another company that was pretty much in the same league as Crunchyroll. They would essentially release anime to the Western audiences with the option of subtitled or dubbed, which was great because anime has been growing in popularity over the last, let's say, two decades. And it was great to have these services that were pretty quick. I mean, if I remember correctly, it was one of them that would state that an hour or so after a brand new episode of a series aired, it would be online, one of their services, already dubbed, I think, or maybe just subtitled, which was great, especially if you really wanted to keep up with um, said series you were watching. But yeah, it was already bad enough that they owned Funimation. But now that Crunchyroll basically owns Crunchy... um, Excuse me, I'm getting my words mixed up. Now that Sony owns Crunchyroll and Funimation, they're basically the same company now. So there really isn't any competition or is going to be any variety between the two because, yeah, you know, there's there's nothing there. One doesn't have the other. They'll just all have roughly everything. So, yeah, they'll just be one homogenized company, which I think is kind of lame to some extent. Competition is always good. It's the reason why we have such great games on different platforms. Competition is always good. It's always good. So taking that away, yeah, you know, it kind of is a bit of a uh, worrying situation to some extent. And I know a lot of people are panicking about this uh, in particular, given that there is a rumor, I guess you could say, that um, Sony is considering making Crunchyroll and I guess Funimation available on a more expensive PlayStation Plus service, which, yeah, is a bit concerning if it becomes exclusive, like you can only exclusively view Crunchyroll, Funimation, whatever it's going to be rebranded as via this more expensive service. So obviously you're going to have to pay more for what you're already paying for and you will only be able to get it via a um, PlayStation subscription, hypothetically, because this is a rumor and I'm not considering this as truth. But if it does happen, honestly, I'm not worried about it because Funimation slash Crunchyroll slash Sony is not absolute absolute, excuse me, they're not, they are not the end all, they are not the only source, okay, simply put, and I'm going to explain why, the main example is, you don't have to give any of them any money, if it really bothers you, or if you're really concerned about the um, legitimacy, I guess, of watching anime, I understand people want to watch it legally, and that's perfectly fine, 
but there are other ways and places to get anime from. For example, you can support other countries by, you know, essentially buying the manga books of these series. Yes, I know not every anime has a manga counterpart, but if they do, go and buy the manga. Uh, companies like uh, Vids Media, they release next to everything on there, so you can go get it. And there are a few other smaller companies. I can't remember the name. I know one has a logo, which is a ship that's in black. They release quite a few other more obscure things. Go and buy the books instead. No money would, in theory, be going to Sony at that point. Um, you can also go and buy the Blu-ray slash DVDs um, from companies such as All the Anime, MVM, uh, Media. These are more. These are companies that are a little bit more exclusive to America and UK sites. So look for the counterparts regarding your country. Um, yeah, just wait. Just wait and buy the um, Blu-ray. Go and support these smaller companies who get the licensing and they'll get a lot more of the money. If people stop using a service, if it bothers you that much, they will have to change. Um, or you can just watch animes on Netflix. The ones Netflix have licensed, you can just watch that exclusively. They have some good stuff. I will always recommend Gretzko, uh, Beastars. Those are two good ones if you haven't watched them. Uh, they license a few other shows that aren't, um, you know, because Netflix likes to dub everything as an original when that's not the case. So you can just do that instead, you know, if you want to spite them or just support somebody else, I guess. Yeah, you can do that. And, of course, you can easily just pirate it if it bothers you that much. I mean, I don't necessarily condole piracy. I'm always under the philosophy of if something is not available, you are in the right to pirate it. So, for example, if you want to watch an obscure film, TV series, and it has not been put on DVD or Blu-ray or is anywhere for you to stream, you have the right to illegally pirate it slash watch it. Um, yeah, I don't really mind when it comes to anime because it's not as if piracy popularized anime in the West. Because, spoilers, it did. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't really worry about it too much. The only thing I am worried about is the growing trend of companies and bigger institutions kind of modernizing everything, oversimplify, simplifying everything. And you've probably noticed already that a lot of these companies are buying up uh, smaller companies, everyone's kind of getting together and gathering and becoming one kind of sort of super company. You've seen it with Sony, you know, finally acquiring a lot of studios like um, uh, Insomniac and Naughty Dog and a couple of smaller studios. Uh, and Microsoft does the same thing. They essentially bought uh, Ninja Theory as well as, um, oh, well, I'm, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the uh, studio. Um, but they make uh, Psychonauts and a few other games. I can't remember why I'm not remembering their name. But um, yeah, you've seen a lot of that happening over the last couple of uh, years. And in terms of gaming, it's more been the case of, oh, good studio make the good game. You know, that's kind of their logic. And it never really pans out because since uh, Ninja Theory has been acquired by Microsoft, does anyone remember the last game they released last year? No, no one remembers that game. Well, of course they wouldn't. Yeah. It is a bit concerning, and it's definitely a perfect time for me to throw in my kind of philosophical quote slash uh, term I'm going to coin in regards to the current global situation and media-based situation going on in the world. And I'm going to say this now on recording so that when people um, refer to what's going on in the same way I have, I'll be the first or at least one of the first. And essentially, we are living in the age of and the decade of reset. Things need to reset. And you can kind of see that coming. We need another company like Crunchyroll and Funimation to come in and kind of be a company, like a singular company. It's coming. This is the age of reset. It's reset. Um, everyone's going to be forced to reset and do something different. But yes, this is the decade and age of reset. I said it first. But yeah, uh, let's move on to some uh, news stories and topics. The only two I want to talk about are two trailers. And they're quite interesting ones as well. And I definitely wanted to talk about them because they weren't getting as much attention as I felt they should. I think people are kind of worrying about other stupid things that aren't going to matter when they finally release. But yeah, the first one I want to talk about is going to be for uh, the Chucky TV series that's going to be releasing in 2021. Now, this caught me off guard because we recently had the awful, I guess, remake reboot in 2019 of the Chucky series which 
I think everyone's kind of forgotten about except for hardcore Chucky fans. And speaking of Chucky fans, the thing about the Chucky franchise is that it's one of the most consistent horror film series of all time, I guess. Like, every film has been good to decent. There's other franchises that have abysmal and awful and just forgettable and laughable films in their franchise and sequels. Chucky isn't really like that. It's kind of always been a little bit um, underground, low-key, low-budget, and this TV series definitely kind of falls in those lines to some extent. And to have a TV series based on everyone's favorite, like, possessed doll could actually work. Like... This does have some potential in some areas, as there are a lot of aspects that I really like about the series. Like, I was actually surprised to enjoy what could potentially happen in this series. Um, a few of these aspects, um, Brad Dorif, I believe that's how you say his second name. It's spelled D-O-U-R-I-F-F. Uh, he is reprising his role as Chucky. He was Chucky in pretty much every film, I believe, and there's about seven or so. Um, Yeah, he's always been Chucky. He was not Chucky in the 2019 film. That was... Oh, I can't even remember his uh, name. Um, Mark Hamill. That's his name. Uh, He was voiced by Mark Hamill. I think Mark Hamill did an okay job, but it didn't feel like Chucky. But then again, that whole film didn't feel like Chucky. It kind of felt like a weird, mutated, alter timeline version of the film where it sucked. And yeah. So that's pretty good to have him kind of come back and be the character. And I think he's doing a fantastic job with his performance and it just works. It feels like Chucky, which is great. It feels authentic. It feels faithful without being pandering. Although I've heard there are going to be cameos in the series, but whatever. I'm not a big enough fan to get excited about those cameos. Um, Yeah, the practical effects, I think, look pretty good. Um, If they are using special effects, I think they blended them pretty well with some practical effects. So that's actually really impressive because... Usually when you see TV series adaptation of a film, it usually takes a dip in terms of the budget and the special effects, but honestly looked pretty good. Some of the more gory, horrific scenes actually looked movie quality-esque, so honestly impressed on that front. Uh, Also, it's teenagers playing teenagers. That's always great. I always love to see actual age casting in films because I'm so sick of adults playing teenagers or kids in films. It's boring and it's distracting as hell. And also, I kind of like the character of Chucky. Like, I've always liked him. But here, he feels like he's more of a sympathetic, wisecracking asshole to an extent. Now, I'm sure maybe some Chucky fans can correct me. And by all means, please do. He may have always been like this to some extent. I haven't watched every film. But I kind of like the way he is in this film. I like how he's kind of on the kid's side to some extent. He kind of is seeing the world as it is, seeing it through his eyes and kind of, you know, uh, kind of relating with him to some extent. Maybe he's going to try and um, persuade him to be a little bit more of a serial killer, I guess. Who, who knows? But, um, you know, the scene with him talking to the sister, um, you know, both with the uh, when they're playing video games and both when they're uh, when Chucky's just in her bed, which is a weird scene in of itself. Um, yeah, that was funny and genuine. Like... I really like those like small little scenes. I like the idea that the little sister or the girl is not phased by a talking doll. I mean, why would she? She probably think that's normal, you know, given how young she is. Um, that stuff is great, and even what you know, Chucky is saying, you know, kind of makes sense. You know, he's with a kid who's an outcast. You know, um, he's seeing it through his lens. Maybe they can relate to some extent. They're both outcasts. They're both weird in some respect. So I like that sort of relatability that could possibly happen with this series. Now, I'll talk about the things that I think kind of sucked with this trailer and this film, or could suck with this uh, series. The editing in the trailer was just awful. I thought it was really bad. I didn't like those stupid uh, jump cuts and flashes that could give you uh, an epileptic fit. And the main character, Jake, mm, what an annoying character off the bat. I'm just going to say that much. There's a difference between an unlike an unlikable character but you're invested in the character and an unlike and unlikable to the point where you're annoyed. You just want to turn the TV series off. He's more annoying. The line about being into retro, I thought was kind of stupid. Cause like the woman's like, Oh, I didn't know you into Vinci. He's like, no, I'm into, I'm into retro. And she was like, Oh, what's the difference? Oh, t- t- 10 buck difference. 
And I was just like, what an ass hat. What an edgy little shit. Um, but yeah, it was so pretentious the way this character's kind of acting up. And then things get even stranger when it's like, why is he bringing the doll into school? Like, they imply that he's already an outcast and he's maybe troubled. He's doing himself no favours by bringing in a doll into school. Like, his character, as far as we can tell from the trailer, isn't like he's edgy and pretentious and that's just what he does or he's known for. Which would make sense that he'd bring in that doll. But that's just weird. Like, he's just asking to be bullied at this point. So I can't really feel sorry for a character who is essentially just bringing that abuse upon himself. And also, he can't stand the sight of blood, yet he's taking apart dolls to make art. You see it in his room, he has like this really horrible um, model made of like uh, doll parts. And I'm just like, okay, Sid Phillips, like, geez. Um, but yeah, Toy Story reference if you couldn't get that one. But yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't really like the character. And I also don't like the aspect of maybe they're not going to have Chucky try and... Or they're not going to have the aspect of, is it really Chucky? Because that was in the first film where you didn't necessarily know if it was and they debated whether it was the kid. I feel like they're going to kind of do that, but I think the character, Jake, is so far removed that it's kind of obvious he's going to start killing people. Like, he's going to have no moral compass. At some point, he's going to be like, well, might as well kill. Um, and I kind of don't like the idea that they're not going to try and have Chucky persuade him uh, to be more evil or to have some more fun, I guess. But we'll have to see. Honestly, pretty intrigued and impressed with what they have to show. Hopefully, this series can be one of those series that actually shows you how it's done. Because uh, one of the best things about this series is that it's an original story. It's not a remake. They didn't just try and remake the first film. They try to do something new, and it looks like it's going to work. So, fingers crossed for that. Uh, next and last trailer I want to talk about is for... Just a weird, goofy-ass film. Uh, Prisoners of the Ghostland. Which, you know, this film looks wild and quite fun. Although, I get the feeling that it's going to be more style over substance. And it doesn't look like Nick, Nick Cage is going to... Or Nicolas Cage. I don't know why I keep saying Nick Cage. Um, that's because I'm thinking of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, that's why. Um, Nicolas Cage won't be doing much in this film, because in a lot of films he's been recently and he kind of doesn't do much, almost to the point of not talking in some films. But yeah, this film actually looks pretty creative, I love a lot of the set designs, I love a lot of the concepts, I love a lot of the visuals, um, costumes, whether there'll actually be a story in a film here, I don't know. Whether that will matter? I don't know, but I wanted to mention this film because it wasn't getting enough attention. Hopefully it's good. I know a lot of people have been raving about these smaller, wilder, crazier kind of films. Uh, Psycho Gorman, uh, Sensor, Pig, which also stars Nicolas Cage. Those are three of the films that are high on my list and I've only heard positive things about. And they're not mainstream, massive, garbage blockbuster films neither. So... Maybe this film will be one of them. But yeah, the trailer doesn't really give you much. It does look like a very odd and strange film. I do like the weird, like, mix match and, um, uh, I forget what you call it, but, um, contrast between having this very, like, Asian, Japanese, uh, samurai, kind of more, um, traditional, like, yokai, demon, Japanese mythology aspect. And then you've just got a character who's dressed as, like, the colonel from KFC. You know, there's, like, American... I forget what they're called, but he's got, like, the white suit, almost got, like, the, um... Uh, you know, the boots and the things you pull on. I, I forget what those characters or that character type is called. But, yeah, it's a very odd visual. You know, you've got, like, the characters, you know, you know, bobbing their head back and forth like a clock and just, you know, Nicolas Cage wearing this suit that can blow up. It's, it's so weird, but it's so original and so creative. I... You know, I've got my fingers crossed that this is, like, a fun time. Hopefully it is. I know the director is known for making films like this, so maybe they'll be able to do it. Maybe they've been given a bigger budget in order to really flex their creative muscles. But, yeah, um, really wanted to recommend this film. Really wanted to recommend both these films. Hopefully they don't fly under the radar, and hopefully they'll be good at the end of the day. But, yeah, 
that's pretty much going to be the podcast. I told you it was going to be a short one, but you know, as I always say, I don't like adding filler to the podcast. If a podcast is going to be 10 minutes, it's going to be 10 minutes. Yeah. I would rather give you quality over talking about a bunch of rubbish quantity. So yeah, let's uh, wrap this up by talking about the video of the episode, which is going to be Unknown Mortal Orchestra with That Life. Really fun creative music video. I love the song. I think the song is pretty chill, honestly. It's a nice, funkier approach from what he's uh, released in the past, and I like that. Uh, the music video itself is quite clever in how it's... Well, actually, I don't want to spoil what it's about, but it's clever how it, I guess, goes about portraying a certain idea about, let's just say, whether you're in control of certain things. It, it's, it's smartly done, and I like how funny and you know cheeky it is to some extent but yeah that's pretty much going to wrap up this podcast it's short but hey hopefully it was enjoyable um i don't usually say this but i might as well um definitely like this video it'd be nice um i know some people don't always like the episodes and that's fine i, I try not to beg for likes but it actually does help out especially given how i'm such a small channel um and uh, yeah also subscribe it's always nice to see and know that I have like a growing and bigger audience. It honestly inspires me to keep going and make more and make these podcasts like better and grander and more detailed and really put some effort in because, uh, yeah, knowing that there are people who enjoy this honestly is a really lovely feeling. And I can't thank uh, all the guys and girls, whatever you want to refer to yourself as, all the newcomers who've enjoyed the episodes or my older videos. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, before this episode gets uh, too sappy, I'm going to end this podcast like I always do by saying I was the angry raccoon and I will see you on the next podcast.